जय ओम विष्णु पात्र हम सह परिव्रज आचार्य अष्टोत श्री श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत गोस्वामी ठाकुर श्री प्रभुपाद की नामाचार्य शाहिदास ठाकुर की प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासादि गौर भक्तवृंद की श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गो गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंद राधा कुंदगिरी गोवर्धन की श्री वृंदावन धाम की नवद्वीप मायपुर धाम की जगन्नाथपुरी की गंगा मई की जमुना मई की भक्ति देवी की तुलसी देवी की समवेता भक्तवृंद की टेक नो दर्ल्ड शो प्रॉप नेशनल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की चार देश प्रभु ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री मैराथन की मेकिंग शो वी मीट आर टारगेट कीज ऑल ग्लोइस दी सेम्बल डिवोरीज ऑल ग्लोइस दी सेम्बल डिवोरीज ऑल ग्लोइस दी सेम्बल डिवोरीज ऑल ग्लोइस श्री गुण श्री गौ रंग ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री प्रभुपाद नम ओम विष्णु पाद आय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमदे भक्ति विकास स्वामी नित नाम ने ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो वी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो टू चैप्टर नाइन टेक्स नंबर सिक्सटीन सिक्सटीन राइट वॉट्स वर्ड सिक्सटीन ओके वृत्त प्रसाद अभिमुख दृक् आसव प्रसन्न हास अरुण लोचन आनन किटिन कुंडलीन चतु भुज पीत अंशुक वक्षसी लक्षित श्रिया भृत्य प्रसाद भिमुख दृगासव प्रसन्न हासुणलोचनानन किटिकुंडलिन चतु किटिन सॉरी किटिन कुंडलीन चतुर्भुज पितांशुक वक्षसी लक्षित श्रिया पिता पितांशुक वक्षसी लक्षित श्रिया प्लीज रिपीट किटिन कुंडलिन चतुर्भुज चतुर्भुज 
Pritya, the reservoir, sorry, the servitor. Prasada, affection. Abhimukam, favorably facing. Drik, the very side. Asavam, an intoxication. Prasanna, very much pleased. Hasa, smile. Arunam, reddish. Lochana, eyes. Ananam, face. Kiritinam with the helmet, Kundalinam with earrings, Chatubhujam with four hands, Pitam yellow, Amsukam dress, Vakshasi on the chest, Laksh Lakshitam marked, Shriya with the goddess of fortune. Translation purport by Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Uh, the personality of Godhead seen leaning favorably towards his loving servitors. His very sight, intoxicating and attractive, appeared to be very much satisfied. He had a smiling face decorated with enchanting reddish, uh, enchanting reddish hue. He was dressed in yellow robes and wore earrings and a helmet on his head. He had four hands and his chest was marked with the lines of the goddess of fortune. Purport. In the Padma Purana, Uttarakhanda, there is a full description of the Yoga Pita, or the particular place where the Lord is in the audience of his eternal devotees. In that Yoga Pita, the personifications of religion, knowledge, opulence, and renunciation are all seated at the lotus feet of the Lord. The four Vedas, namely Rik, Sama, Yajur, and Atarva, are present there, are present there personally and, uh, to advise the Lord. The 16 energies headed by Chanda are all present there. Chanda and Kumuda are the first two doorkeepers at the middle door are the doorkeepers uh, oh, okay are the, the first two doorkeepers at the middle door are the doorkeepers named Bhadra and Subhadra and at the last door are Jaya and Vijaya there are other doorkeepers also named Kumuda, Kumudaksha, Pundarika, Vamana, Shankukarna, Sarvanetra, Sumukha etc. The Lord's palace is well decorated and protected by the above mentioned doorkeepers. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manu Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mahim Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Tafpada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishavam Shri Shri Rupam Sakar Jatam Zahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sagan Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitam Shri he Krishna Karana Sandho Dina Bando Jagat Pate Gopi Shakopi Kakanta Ratha Kanta Namosate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vandavaneshwari Vishabhana Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vanchakal Pataru Bhesha Kripas and Dubhevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhio Vaishame Bhio Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishupadaya Krishna Prishtai Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vikasa Swaminati Namine Raja Janera Savedi Prachita Sri Jaya Sri Sahapari Karagorang Rajajanara Savedi, Prachita Shri Jaya Shri, Sahaparikara Gaurang Rankita Swanta Bhumi, Bhuna Vidita Tirta Soma Kirta Ervitai, Bhuvi Jayati Vikaso Bhakti Purvo Yatindra. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtai Bhutale Shimate, Bhakti Vedanta Swamati Namne, Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunya Vadi Pashyati Deshatarine, Vagisha Yasya Vadane Lakshmi Yasya Chivakshasi, Yasya Sehida Yasam Vittam Rasimha Mahambhaje, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda 
श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त बिंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वागीशा यसे वदने लक्ष्मी यसे चिवक्षसे यसे यसे हृदय संवेद तमर से महम हम बचे मुकम करते वाचालम पंगम लंगायते गिर मेत कृपात महम वंदे श्री गुरुम दिन तारणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम यसे देवे परावक्त यता देवे तथा गुरु तसे Okay, Hare Krishna. So it's um, very nice to be back here in all of your association. Um, so we're reading this 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 um, verse describing the kingdom of God, describing how the supreme personality of Godhead is situated, how all the different doorkeepers are present, and uh, how beautiful the supreme personality of Godhead is. It's inconceivable for us to understand how beautiful the supreme personality of Godhead is. He is all attractive. You know, I, I remember I said this once before. It's, just, it's okay. It's, it's good to repeat these things again. That, um, you know, let, let's just say, think of the most beautiful person, the most beautiful thing that we have experienced in this material world. Think of all the beautiful things. Like, let's just say a beautiful sunrise, a beautiful sunset, a beautiful waterfall, a beautiful mountain, a beautiful view, a beautiful person, a beautiful building, a beautiful ruby, a beautiful sa- sapphire, a beautiful emerald, so many beautiful things we've seen in this world. And if we were to somehow take all the beauty of all these different objects and all these different things, and we were to keep them in one place, and we were, and like that was a combined beauty of all the beautiful things in this material world, not just on the earthly realm, but in the heavenly planets and in the subterranean heavenly planets and the, you know, everything beautiful, everything beautiful, everything amazing. If we were to combine all of that and keep it aside somewhere and, can you, and, and, and keep all the beauty of this material world all together in one spot, and we, uh, we put the beauty of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and we, and we compare it to the beauty of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the beauty of this material world is actually tucha. It is nothing compared to the beauty of Krishna. All the beauty that we see in this material world. If we were to somehow were to combine it, still the beauty of Krishna way triumphantly transcends, is way more beautiful than we can ever imagine. Ananda chinmaya rasatma tayamanasu yapraninam pratipadam smaratam upetya lila yatena bhunani chayata jashram govinda madhi purusham tamaham pachami. Then, there's, um, can I um, yes, you know, put this verse up? It's a, it's a really amazing verse in the Brahma Samhita where we see this, that how Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's beauty, Everything related to Krishna, they always transcend everything that we can see in this world and much more. I think it's probably 48. Um, we see this over here. Okay, there, is, there it is. I really, I really love this verse, and I'm more, I, I'm, this verse is amazing. The purport is even more amazing. I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, whose glory ever triumphantly dominates the mundane world by the activity of his own pastimes. This is the thing, very important thing to understand. That Krishna's glory, Krishna's beauty, everything about Krishna, it triumphantly dominates. You know, like it's not just like, oh, they just made it. It's not like you just like, oh, you just defeated. No, like it dominates. Like you know, there's, no, there's no question of, of the other side winning. Uh, being reflected in the mind of recollecting souls as a transcendental entity of ever blissful cognitive rasa. So now the purport is really amazing. Those who constantly recollect in accordance with spiritual instructions, the name, figure, attributes, and pastimes of the form of Krishna appearing in the amorous rasa, whose loveliness vanquishes the god of mundane love, conqueror of all mundane hearts, are alone meditators of Krishna. Krishna, who is full of pastimes, always manifests himself with his realm, only in the pure receptive cognition of such persons. The, the pastimes of that manifested divine realm triumphantly dominates in every way all the majesty and beauty of this mundane world. So this is, I guess I was paraphrasing this purport. But we can see this, that the, the pastimes of that manifested divine realm triumphantly dominates in every way all the majesty and beauty of this mundane world. So, so we, we cannot conceive of how beautiful the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. That's the most attractive thing that you know, naturally when a person is beautiful, you want to talk to them. Naturally when a person is beautiful, you want to look at them. Naturally when a person is beautiful, you would like to have their association in some way, shape or form. So the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is so beautiful that he even bewilders Cupid, Kamadeva, this, the, the person who shoots the arrows of lust 
at the living entities. There's five arrows that, the, that, that, that Cupid shoots. It's mentioned in the Brahmacharya and Krishna consciousness. And, you know, he bewilders all these, he bewilders all the living entities in these pangs of lust which people imagine to be love. But Krishna dominates even, even Kamadeva, who is, you know, who is, you know, taking over this, this whole world. He's shooting his arrows everywhere. And we can see, I think my Guru Maharaj is saying, right in the middle of Oxford Street or something, or Oxford Street, there's like this, this uh, like statue of Kamadev, you know, of like, what do they call him? Like something, huh? Cupid, Cupid, Cupid. of Cupid, you know, shooting arrows. Like he's right in the center of the center of the city, you know. So, you know, so this is how the entire material world is going on in the name of lust and it's going here and it's going there. But we can see over here, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is so attractive. He's so attractive that we cannot conceive of um, anything in this world which even comes close to the beauty of Krishna. Krishna's beauty far, uh, far supersedes and far dominates every, everything that we can see in this material world. You know, that we can see that, you know, Krishna, you know, he's, um, he's very unique. But, you know, we're also reading about the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Vaikuntha. And, um, you know, we can see there's a few verses describing the beauty of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and how amazing he is. And um, some of his associates start to... Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. In those Vaikuntha planets, there are many forests which are very auspicious. In those, in those forests, the trees are, are, des are desired trees. And in all seasons, they are filled with flowers and fruits because everything in Vaikuntha is spiritual and personal. In Vaikuntha planets, the inhabitants fly in their airplanes accompanied by their wives and consorts, eternally sing of the character and activities of the Lord, which are always devoid of inauspicious qualities. While singing the glories of the Lord, they deride even the presence of the blossoming Madhavi flowers, which are fragrant and laden with honey. When the king of bees hums in a high pitch, singing the glories of the Lord, there is a temporary lull in the noise of the pigeon, the cuckoo, the crane, the charvaka, the swan, the parrot, and the patridge, and the peacock. Such transcendental birds stop their own singing simply to hear the glories of the Lord. Although flowering plants like the mandara, kunda, kuru, kur, kur, kurabaka, utpala, champaka, arna, punaga, naga, naga, naga keshara, pakula, lily, and parijata are full of transcendental fragrance, they are still conscious of the austerities performed by Tulasi. For Tulasi is given special preference by the Lord who garlands himself with, her, with Tulasi leaves. The inhabitants of Vaikuntha travel in their airplanes made of lapis lazuli. This is a very beautiful um, like stone, you know. We were considering getting a propas Vyasasin done in lapis lazuli at a particular point of time, but it would stand out. It would not fit, fit into the whole power of the temple room right now. Rabbit has the emerald and gold. Although crowded by their consorts who, are, who, are very, who have large hips and beautiful smiling faces, they cannot be assimilated to passion by their mirth and beautiful charms. The ladies in Vaikuntha planets are as beautiful as the goddess of fortune herself. Such transcendently beautiful ladies, their hands playing with lotuses and, and, the, and their leg bangles tinkling, are sometimes seen sweeping the marble walls, which are bedecked at intervals with golden borders in order to receive the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And, and okay, I'll read this one last verse, and before I'll go to some others. The goddess of fortune, the goddesses of fortune worship the Lord in their own gardens by offering tulsi leaves on coral paved banks of transcendental reservoirs of water. While offering worship to the Lord, they can see the water, the reflection of their beautiful face and their with raised noses, and appears that they have become more beautiful because of the Lord's kissing their faces. And um, I wanted to go to these. This over here. This is the cursing of Jaya and Vijaya. I'm just looking for... Okay, yeah. At that very moment, the Lord who is called Padmanabha, because of the lotus grown from his navel, and who is the delight of the righteous learned about, uh, learn, righteous, learned about the insult offered by his own servants to the saints, accompanied by his spouse, the goddess of fortune, 
he went to the spot on those very feet sought, by the, sought for by recluses and great sages. The sages headed by Sanaka Rishi saw that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vishnu, who was formerly visible only within their hearts in ecstatic trance, had now actually become visible to their eyes. As he came forward, accompanied by his own associates, bearing all paraphernalia, such as an umbrella and a chamara fan, the white, the, the, the white bunches of hair moved very gently, like two swans. And due to their favorable breezes, the pearls garlanding the umbrella also moved, like drops of nectar falling from the white full moon or ice melting due to a gust of wind. The Lord is a reservoir of all pleasure. His auspicious presence is meant for everyone's benediction, and his affectionate smiling and glancing touch the core of the heart. You know, this, is, this verse and the next verse are so amazing. The Lord's beautiful bodily color is blackish, and his broad chest is the resting place of the goddess of fortune, who, is glorified, who glorifies the entire spiritual world, the summit, of the, uh, the summit of all heavenly planets. Thus, it appeared that the Lord was personally spreading the beauty and good fortune of the spiritual world. Yeah, He was adorned with a girdle that shone brightly on that yellow cloth covering his large hips and he wore a garland of fresh flowers which was distinguished by humming bees. His lovely wrists were graced with bracelets and he rested uh, one of his hands on the shoulder of Garuda, his carrier, and twirled a lotus in another hand. His countenance was distinguished by, by cheeks enhanced the beauty of his alligator-shaped pendants, which outshone lightning. His nose was prominent, and his head was covered with a gem-studded crown, gem crown. A charming necklace hung between his stout arms, and his neck was adorned with a gem known by the name Kaustuba. I'll read a few more verses here. The exquisite beauty of Narayana, being many times magnified by the intelligence of his devotees, was so attractive that it defeated the pride of the goddess of fortune in being the most beautiful. My dear demigods, the Lord who thus manifested himself is worshipable by me, Lord Shiva, and all, by all of you. The sages regarded him with unsated eyes and joyously bowed their heads at his lotus feet. Um, looking at this. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. This verse, when I first said it for the first time in my life, it, it really, it was, it was, it's, it's such, it's so amazing. In, Teva Amushya Vadana Sita Padma Kosham Udviksha Sundarat Radhara Kundahasam Labdha Shisha Punar Aviksha Tadiya Mangri Dvandvam Nakaruna Mani Shrayanam Nidadyuhu. The Lord's beautiful face appeared to them like the inside of a blue lotus. When I, I, remember, I remember reading this for the first time, I thought that's so beautiful. The, the Lord's beautiful face appeared to them like the inside of a blue lotus. And the Lord's smile appeared to be like a jasmine, like, like, like a blossoming, blossoming jasmine flower. You know, can we conceive of how the inside of a beautiful blue lotus would, would look? Has anyone seen a lotus before? Like on a lake, like a fresh one, like a, not like what they sell you in store, which is probably like 100 days old or whatever, and they put some pesticides in it to make it look fresh. But a fresh lotus is so beautiful. But imagine like a, the, the lotus that's found in the heavenly planets, and then the lotus that's found in the spiritual world, and he's, he, the complexion of, of, of Lord Vishnu is like the inside of a blue lotus. This always like, you know, struck me, and I, I always wondered. After seeing the face of the Lord, the sages were fully satisfied. And when they wanted to see him further, they looked upon the nails of his toe of his lotus feet, which resembled rubies. Wow. That's amazing. We can even see the lotus feet of Radha Govinda. And there's a beautiful picture of Radha Govinda in my room. And uh, you can see Lord Govinda's lotus feet. They really look like rubies. Thus they viewed the Lord's transcendental body again and again. And so they finally achieved meditation on the Lord's personal feature. So this is so beautiful. Like we see this over here. You know, that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his, you know, his entire beauty is so attractive and it's so into it's, it's very, his very sight is intoxicating and attractive, so much so that everything just becomes dull in this world. You know, we can see that, you know, next to, next to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the personifications of religion and, you know, the four Vedas are sitting, you know, sitting there by his side to give him advice. 
You know, we see that, you know, there's so many doors and there's so many gatekeepers. You know, one may ask, you know, why does the Supreme Personality of Godhead need to have gatekeepers and, and like, you know, doormen and people with weapons and all this and all that. And, you know, and if, if you read further in, in Shastra, we'll see that in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has like this whole, like, entire, whole army, like Vishwaksena, right? He's the head of the army of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in Vaikuntha. There's a whole army, you know, in Vaikuntha. Like, you know, who are they going to fight? Who, who, who could even, like, come to fight them all the way to the spiritual world? Why is it there, you know? Is there for the pleasure of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead? You know, he's there in Vaikuntha. He's the, you know, he's known to be, like, the boss. He's the king, you know? So when the king is there, if the king is there, naturally all these things will be there. You know, naturally, like, you know, one may say, oh, what's the use of the, you know, why, why do you need to have, like, um, you know, security for this or that. But, you know, any important person you see, like, you know, when, you know, I remember Avadu Chandra Prabhu sent a message that I-75 is blocked off, you know, for some reason. Usually, when these roads are blocked off and these highways are blocked, it's usually some VIP comes, you know, like some, you know, I remember one time, I think the vice president was going through Atlanta or something like, so many roads were blocked off just so she could go somewhere to do something. You know, just because she was coming, you know, and that she's the vice president of United States of America. And what, what is all that in comparison to Lord Vishnu? Nothing, nothing whatsoever. So if they can have all these things, if, if the king can have his entourage, and what to speak of Lord Vishnu? Lord Vishnu has his entourage. He has, you know, he has so many doors, Saptadvaram, you know, he has the, you know, the seven, actually you, you guys are going to be distributing books for Vaikuntha Kadashi, the Sapta. We tell them it's a Saptagiri packet, or, you know, I remember when I went to, when I went to this other place, Vishnu the Prabhupada, I was telling them this is the Sapta Dwaram packet, you know, I was telling them it's like the seven doors of Vaikuntha, you know, whatever, you know, that, that was really selling this Vaikuntha Kadish is seven doors of Vaikuntha, you got to take these seven books, but it's actually ten books, but anyway, we tell them seven big books or whatever, you know, we and it, it always sells, you know, and the Supreme Person you got in, in his kingdom, all these beautiful things are there, you know, he dominates, he dominates, he's the king, he's there, he's pres personally present over there. And all of these, all of these, uh, all of these devotees are present there for the pleasure of, of Krishna. All of them are there for the, for, for his pleasure. So we can see this that you know, uh, although there's no need for all this, the the, the supreme person in one sense, one, oh, who who can attack the supreme personality of God? Who can do what? You know, do, does 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 Krishna really need his servants? Does Lord Rama really need his servants? Does does Vishnu really need his servants? Yes, of course. In one sense, he exists for the sake of his devotees. Santa, Premanjana Chirita Bhakti Velochanena, Santa Sadaiva Hidayeshi Velokayanti, Yam Shama Sundara Machanti Gunaswarupam, Govinda Madhi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. That one of the names of Lord Vishnu is Santa. So he exists for the sake of his pure devotees. He exists for their sake. You know. But in another sense, from another point of view, you know, does the Supreme Personality of Godhead really need to be on the back of Garuda to go from one place to another? So we can see this, that, you know, when Gajendra, you know, we had this beautiful painting of Gajendra, you know, when he was calling to Lord Vishnu, Lord Vishnu, without wearing his shoes, without wearing, without wearing anything, you know, he, whatever he was dressing, he was sitting next to the goddess of fortune, he immediately runs out of his palace and he gets on the back of Garuda and Garuda is flying. And when, 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 the, when the Supreme Lord saw that the Garuda, Garuda was not flying fast enough, he held Garuda on his hand and he flew faster than Garuda. And then he got back on Garuda. This is... There, this is my, my Guru Maharaj was giving a class recently on one of these names of Vishnu Sahasranam. So he held Garuda and he got him there. And he got him there. And, 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 and they went there as quickly as possible. Why? Simply for the sake of his devotee. Supreme person, does he need? No, but, it, but they're there because, you know, he, they, you know they like, he likes to keep them engaged. You know, like now when we get more and more men, our main, main concern is how are we going to keep them engaged? So the Supreme Person of Godhead, you know, he makes arrangements to keep his devotees engaged. Okay, you can be the doorkeeper, you can be this, you can... And there's unlimited engagement the Supreme Personality of Godhead can give. Why? Because he's unlimited. There's unlimited service to perform for him. So he can have unlimited servants. And I have unlimited servants. And you know, we can see this, you know, that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, you know, he's residing on Anantashesha. You know, he's residing on Anantashesha. And he's, you know, he... Anantashesha, you know, performs that pastime of, of uh, you know, of being the Lord's, like, you know, pillow, being the Lord's, like, you know, bed... You know, you know the, the coils of a serpent, the transcendental serpent, you know, Anantashesha, must be very comfortable because the Supreme Personality of Godhead resides on there. And we can only see that the Supreme Personality of Godhead only can do such things, you know. Is there anyone who would dare to, like, you know, go and, like, you know, lie down on 
the coils of a very dangerous, poisonous, powerful serpent? No. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, he can do that. He lies down on Ananta. And you know, the, the, same, the same Supreme Personality of Godhead, they come down one day, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya, Nityananda, Sahodito, Gurudev, Pushpavan, Toshitra, Shandu, Tamunada. They come down as uh, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. They come down and you know, we can see that you know, in, in, the, in the ecstatic pastimes of, of, of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, when um, Lord Chaitanya is performing his, his pastimes, you know, he becomes, you know, Lord Nityananda becomes so ecstatic that he faints. And then when he faints, Lord Chaitanya himself holds Lord Nityananda in his hands. And the devotees comment that, you know, in, in the Chaitanya Bhagavad, you know, um, Vrindavan, Vrindavan Das Thakur, you know, he comments that, just see, now Lord Chaitanya has even broken the pride of Anantashesh. And the Shesh was very proud that he was, of course, transcendental pride. We don't, of course, there's no, uh, there's no mundane pride in Ananta Shesh or, or Lord Nityananda. But they say, just see, he's even broken the pride of, 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 of Lord Ananta. Because An- Lord Ananta was very proud that the Lord Vishnu would always reside on him and he would like, you know, hold Lord Vishnu. But now, you know, Nityananda Prabhu fallen on Lord, uh, on Lord Chaitanya. We can see that he is supporting even Nityananda Prabhu. He's, a, he's, he's supporting them. So the, the beauty of, of servitorship is very amazing. In the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he gives us unlimited engagement. He gives us unlimited engagement. And you know, like Vishnu Prabhu was saying this morning, Namalavar, on this day, you know, he opened up the gates of Vaikuntha and he took whoever wanted to come with him, he took them to Vaikuntha. So we can see, even see, you know, that even now till today, in, in Sri Rangam, this must be the day, right? In so many Sri Vaishnava places, this must be the day where you could like go to, you could go to, you know, you go to these temples and then you'll see that they have these seven gates very decorated very nicely. You know. Some of you are going to get to go to Sri Rangam. It's a very amazing place. You know, I had one of my most life-changing experiences in Sri Rangam actually. And, um, you know, the, the Sapta Dwarams are there and you can see this going through the gates, as I go into the gates of Vaikuntha. They're decorated like that. I remember... Um, when we first got permission to distribute books in one of these Sri Vaishnava temples, I told Vishnu, yeah, let's go to Vaikuntha and get gold for Lord Chaitanya. You know, <laughs> we were going through these. You know, so we could be, you know, we were, you know, we were you know, we distributing books there like that. But, you know, we see that, you know, it's, it's very amazing. And Namalvar, you know, he made facility for all his followers to go back home, back to Godhead with him. So similarly, you know, Srila Prabhupada has made facilities for, this, for all the living entities of this material world to go back home, back to Godhead. And he's made this facility for everyone to, uh, you know, to take to the process of Krishna consciousness. You know, he started, and one person, you know, sometimes, mostly insincere people ask such questions, but anyway, one person asked me a question that, you know, if Krishna is so kind and if Lord Chaitanya is so kind, why can't he just give, give us Kripa Siddhi? You know, like, why can't he just come? Like, just like how he went and he hugged all those seven trees and the seven trees went back to Vaikuntha. You know, why, why can't he just do that to me? Why do I need to struggle? Why do I need to do all this? Why can't I just get the, uh, you know, the, just like the, the, the mercy of, of Lord Chaitanya? But I told him, you already have the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. You know, that you have this whole process of, you know, that, that given to us by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We have this whole process. And this whole process is so amazing. Anyone can take to this. You know that, you know, this is the Kripa Siddhi of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the very fact that we were completely uh, addicted to the four pillars of sinful life, but now, you know, we are, we are not addicted to the four pin, pillars of sinful life. That itself is a mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Furthermore, the more we engage in the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the more we can go back home, back to Godhead. You know, if it was such a case that, okay, I'll just touch you, whoever, okay, so let's just say, Sri Prabhupada, you know, he, you know he, can, he can do something like that. He, I just touch you, I give you prema, you go back home, back to Godhead, and it's done. And then, if that were the case, then the process by which the further generations could actually take the process of Krishna consciousness would not be there. You know, Sri Prabhupada could do that. You know, like um, Lord Chaitanya could just like, you know, just given everyone Krishna Prema and that's it and Hari Bol, you know, everyone's gone. Then what about the next generations? So the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu continues in the form of giving people the process of Sharanagati. The people can take complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Krishna is so kind that he actually gives us this amazing knowledge. You know, today is also Gita, Gita Ekadashi, Gita Jayanti. This is the day that Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna 5,000 years ago. Every year, every year is 5,000 years ago, I guess. You know, what, like what, what's the exact number? I think it's in Surya Siddhanta. It's the exact year and the exact date is there, you know, that, um, 
you know that uh, oh you guys are going going to the secret books okay so you know the actually you know just wait for a few minutes you won't lose anything you know um this Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita. You know, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita in order to deliver all the living entities, in order to give everyone the highest message. So Sri Prabhupada also came and he spoke the, the he spoke the Bhagavad Gita as it is. He gave us the Bhagavad Gita as it is in order for it to in order to protect you know the, the Bhagavad Gita from misinterpretations by rascals and fools who would destroy uh, who destroy people's perspective of going back home back to Godhead. You know, uh, I remember I was, I was this was this was this is a lecture. Uh, actually, I'm going to, like, if I played a video, would it show up there? It would, but audio won't. Audio won't come, so I'll just, um, yeah, so, you know, I just wanted, anyway, you, you probably can hear this shot thing and then go. I remember Mar Marge gave this lecture for, for us, you know, it's called, it's called uh, All Glories to the Book Distributors, and, you know, we had requested him to give a class, you know, so and orchestrating his situation so that people take books. Krishna, the great mystic, uh, and Arjuna, the, the devotee who is uh, determined to fight for Krishna, but not for himself. He, Arjuna got converted from being someone who is interested in his own pleasure to someone who is prepared to fight for Krishna only for Krishna's sake. So when there's a combination, there will certainly be opulence. By book distribution, there will be opulence. There will be victory. There win. will be morality. So everything comes by book distribution. And then we book distribution, and we need to have good sadhana. We need to study the books. We, we know we need to chant... We know it. You don't have to tell. You chant your rounds carefully. You know, that you have to chant, concentrating, and the need to become a sincere devotee. You know, so we can see this. You know, we're going out there. Maharaj actually, a few minutes before this, he quotes Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna Yatra Partho Dhanu Daraha Tatra Shri Vijaya Bhuti Druani Tirmati Mama. Yeah, he actually, yeah, Maharaj asked us to learn this verse. I, I hope everyone. Yeah, all devotees in Christian life should learn this verse. So, I hope everyone's learned this verse. So, we, had, you know, that he was saying that yes, you know, wherever this Krishna and the great archer Arjuna, but you know, it doesn't only just mean Arjuna. You know, but it also means those book distributors who are actually going out there. And that's what he's saying. You know, the book distributors are actually going out there and actually surrendering to Krishna, the, the supreme personality of God within the heart. He actually will, you know, get directions from the supreme personality of God himself. <coughs> As long as we're doing book distribution, not for our own self-aggrandizement, but for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna, then we will get all the blessings of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Everything that is there, we'll get. There'll be victory. Certainly, there'll be opulence. There'll be morality. All amazing things will actually come if we simply do this. The, and the, the only pitfall is poison. The only poison is personal ambition. The personal ambition is the poison. Therefore, we should be very careful of not falling prey to all these things. Why? Because the blessings of the Acharyas are already there. The blessings of the spiritual master is already there. And, um, you know, we can, you know, we could, we should just meditate constantly upon how to please the spiritual master properly. Idam Vishnave, idam namama. This is for Lord Vishnu. This is not for me. If we simply have this mentality, idam Vishnave, idam namama. This is for the Supreme Personality of God. It is not for me. Then naturally we will become empowered to distribute books. Idam Guruve, Idam Namama. This is for the spiritual master, this is not for me. So we, we, the more we think like this, Idam Vishnave, Idam Namama, Idam Guruve, Idam Namama, the more we think like this, the more we will be blessed by the Supreme Personality of God, the more empowered we will become to distribute Sri Prabhupada's books. This book distribution is our most important activity. Therefore, we should make sure that our ego, our anarthas, all these things do not come in the way. And we have to go out there and do the needful. And what is needed right now is for us to become completely humble and become instruments in the hands of the spiritual master. That is what is needed. That is the secret to success. If we want to be successful in this book distribution mission, we should be willing to go past all things which are barring, barring us from surrendering more and more to Krishna. And especially our own misconceptions, our own hang-ups. We may have so many hang-ups. We may have all these things. So if we want to, remain, if we want to become empowered... 
and we want to do this life after life every time, then we should definitely remove our own personal agendas from the picture. When we remove our own personal agendas from the picture, certainly we will receive the blessings of the spiritual master to perform this. Yes, competition is there, but competition is for the pleasure of the spiritual master, not at the cost of our own life. Not at the cost of our own life. We should, it's not some egotism. So many big book distributors have come and they've gone. But those who stay, you can see, Brigupati Prabhu, you can see, Kamalini Mataji, they're so fired up and they're so humble. I mean, like their humility really breaks, breaks our heart. You know, it really, like their humility breaks your heart. It, it really does. I mean, we were talking to Kamalini Mataji yesterday and then, you know, they're on their way to like Kirtan, Dallas. They're going there for that thing. And on their way to Dallas, they said, oh, we're going to make it there very soon. I said, why, Mataji? I was thinking, maybe because like, Prabhuji can't drive. I said, no, no, we're going to be stopping by Walmarts on our way to Dallas to distribute books. Mm-hmm. Who is so fired up? Like them, like, come on. That was crazy. When I heard that, I was thinking, oh, my God, I'm so much on the mental platform. You know? They're going, they, on their way to Dallas, they want to stop in a Walmart. Like most Walmarts, at least, at least like in the middle of nowhere, sometimes they're like really suffering Walmarts, you know. They're willing, they're willing to stop by any Walmart and try distributing Shri Prabhupada's books over there. I mean, just imagine like how amazing that is. Yeah? It's just Brikupati Prabhu, is willing, you know, he's willing to gun it like every single day he guns it. Every day he goes out from like for so many hours and he's just out there and he's, you know, just, you know, you know pounding the pavements every day. Why? You know, because, you know, because of... Uh, you know, because of this whole, because, because of keeping their own personal motivations and everything aside, you know. Personal ambition is a poison, you know, therefore we should be very careful to not fall prey to this, you know. And in this regard, you know, I would like to um, pull up a small thing for devotees here to see. Um, sorry, one minute. Okay, all right, so is it up? Okay, so is this, is this visible? How about now? Yeah, okay. So anyway, this is, you know, my response to my Guru Mahaj's previous email. I said, Dear Guru Dev, Dandar Pranam, all glories to you, all glories to your Prabhupada and faithful followers. I said, either I'll die like Abhimanyu in the Chakra Vyuha, or I'll be victorious like Arjuna after killing Jayadratha. But ultimately, I've got my eyes on the prize, which is to please my spiritual master. His great Sharadeshan Prabhu left this world on the first day of our marathon. We are very inspired to continue his legacy. One of the main reasons we're able to distribute books every day of the marathon is because of four Matijis, Mahaboga Mataji, Devayani Mataji, Anaya Mataji, and Topaz Mataji, along with their friends, wrapping up thousands of books daily. Right, almost, right? 250 times 4 is like a 1,000. So I wasn't lying to my spiritual master. So uh, our marathon would not be possible without that help. I'd like to, now this is the good news. I'd like to humbly beg your holiness to please give a talk on January 3rd for the devotees at KL. We will be celebrating uh, your Vyasa Puja on that day, a tradition that all of the devotees here look forward to celebrating every year. We would like to present our scores to your holiness to have your association in for a few moments would be the greatest blessing. Especially for those, those of us, those unfortunate f- souls like myself, who don't have the great fortune of being able to attend Vyasa Puja Festival in Puri. Guru <laughs> Replies back, Bhakti Vikas Maharaj, he says, Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Jayata, dear Mahotsar Prabhu, may all Shri Prabhupada's blessings always be upon you. Wishing you all the best in your amazing book distribution efforts. Please convey my blessings and appreciations to the Matajis who are working behind the scenes to facilitate the book distribution. So I want to make sure I follow his order. I plan to go from Velo to Salem on third of Jan on Jan third afternoon and should reach there in time to give a talk at seven PM, which could be broadcast live so Atlanta devotees could see it. Das Anudas BBK Bhakti Vikas Swami. So you know we got a 
We don't want to go and tell him that, Marge, we didn't meet our target, do we? Anyone wants to do that? Does, any, any, does everyone want to say, Marge, we beat our target? No. You said no? Okay, okay. Get out. <laughs> you get out. <laughs> so does everyone, want to tell, does everyone want to tell Marge on January 3rd that we beat our target? Yeah. I didn't hear you all. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's right. So we're going to do this. Somehow, the, somehow the other, you know, somehow the other. I don't know about Tyrese, but you know, but you know, all of us, we're all going to do it. We, in, we, we, you know, we, we're in it to win it. You know, it, it, yes, you know, it's like sometimes, you know, things go wrong here and there. We may have lost a few battles, but we will win this war. We have to do it somehow. Or the other, we have to go. We have to give it all. Give it all we got, and we can do this. We can. We can. It's not impossible. Impossible is a word in a full dictionary. So, Krishna willing, in the next three days, the tides will turn. I think time is in our favor. The Supreme Personality of God is. We're on the Supreme Personality of Godhead's side. So yeah, he's a great Supreme Mystic. So starting today, we can turn this marathon around. Okay. Shri Prabhupada's Transcendental Book Distribution. Okay, 7 p.m. on Jan 3 is 8.30 a.m. for us. So that's a good time. <laughs> huh? What do you say? 7 p.m. on January 3rd in India is 8.30 a.m. for us. So, you know, we can, the morning class will be, so, you know, we don't want to have any sorry faces to show to Marge, you know. We want to, we want to tell Marge that Marge, you know, we, we've done it. And I want to tell Marge that I beat all of y'all. So, I'm definitely going to go do something crazy out there, okay. So, please bless me that I beat all of you. <laughs> and uh, that we also meet our target, okay. Jai Shri Prabhupada ki jai, Chaudesh Prabhu ki jai, Gita Ekadashi ki jai. Vancha kalpa tarubhyasya kripa sandhubhyasya patitanam pavnebhyo vaishyamibhyo namo namaha.